So we arrive at station number seven. I can picture it in my mind. We're going up the steps from a lower level of Jerusalem, up the steps to a higher level, approaching where the Church of the Holy Sepulchre is or where Calvary was at the time. And again, this is one of the stations that is not mentioned in the Bible, that uh, he falls the second time. It never tells us that he falls, but it's only common sense. Many times when we've walked in the early morning doing the Via Della Rosa along these streets, it has just rained or it's wet. And I've already told you about the one time we we're slushing through snow in the spring at the time of the Passover meal for the Jews. And people have slipped and fallen or tripped and fallen. The roads are uneven. You can't always see them, especially in the, oftentimes we go in the dark and we've had people slip or trip and imagining Jesus again carrying this 110 pound beam of wood on his back and totally eviscerated with pain and whipping and in shock and trying to struggle through the streets, um, probably pushing through crowds as well. In the second station of the, uh, I mean, in the second time that he falls, I like to just give an idea of the surroundings. This was nothing new. There were criminals being taken from Pontius Pilate and the either the Herodian in one part of uh, Jerusalem or the uh, Antonia Fortress. And they would be uh, then taken through the streets of the city, narrow streets. These aren't roads where you drive cars down. These are narrow streets where people walked. And the shopkeepers have their vegetables and their fruit and their bread, the pita bread and the meat. So that you see whole lambs hanging there, you see flies landing on them, and the whole lamb is just hanging there, uh, skinned, and uh, chickens and eggs and all of these things. And you can imagine the shopkeeper's dismay when all of a sudden here comes another bunch of criminals being taken down the street. Get those guys out of here. I'm trying to sell my wares. What are you doing bringing them down my street? You get blood all over everything. Quick, bring everything in until these guys get by and the crowd's going through the streets. And I can imagine back in those days that um, Jesus was treated with great disrespect. Nobody was saying, oh, look at this poor criminal. There were many, many thieves I did a, some research on this, and during the time of Christ, a lot of thieves were crucified every day because there was a lot of theft and a lot of petty uh, crimes, and even worse crimes. There's murder and so on. And we know Barabbas was an insurrectionist. If it hadn't been Jesus, they'd be taking him out. And so there were always these men going down the streets, covered with blood from whipping and making a mess of everything, knocking things over with the beam of the cross, falling down on the guy's merchandise. And here he falls again, but no mercy. Just people yelling, get him out of here, get him out of here, he's messing with my business. And people frustrated and angry and thinking that he was a mendicant, a, a, a mendacious, mendicant, criminal thief, one of these guys that uh, go out all the time to be crucified. So he falls on the ground and no one's there to really care. No one's there to really be able to help him because the soldiers are pushing him along and keeping everybody else away from him. And it's a very sad scene. It's a very sad scene uh, for sure. He, as I had mentioned a bit earlier, there is a devotion of the sixth wound of Jesus. Obviously two in his hands, two in his feet, and one in his side. His whole body was a wound though. His whole body was ripped because when those flagellum, they would rip the flesh. So as when it hit, it would wrap around your body. And when you pull it out, it would tear the flesh and blood would splatter and everything. So his whole chest and his back and his buttocks and his legs, the, the, his thighs and the back of his legs would have been ripped to shreds. But of the major wounds, the two in his hands and feet and in his side, and also his head from the crown of thorns, but the sixth uh, devotion is to the sixth wound, which is from the cross, carrying it all this way on a back that's already ripped to shreds like raw hamburger, and he's carrying this thing all along. No wonder that he falls, and every time he falls, it smashes his face again, and then he has to get up again, and they probably grabbed him and pulled him up and pushed him along the way. The Son of God, the creator of the universe, all things were made for him and by him, and he's putting up with this abuse when he could have stopped it at any moment. 
just remember as we go through each of these stations that he could have called 72,000 angels, warrior angels. He could have put an end to the whole thing instantly. But he kept going and stumbling along because he loved us.